How to properly test your script, the absolute importance of script testing. What, right. is, what is script testing? Script, script testing, so when I was starting out, um, a manager did this for me and I'll forever be grateful. So the way it works is most people, they'll write a script and they'll give it to their friends, their writing group, people they trust, and they want feedback. You know, what's working, what's not working, critique, suggestions, way to improve it. And what I was taught, and I see a lot of the more successful writers working that way, working this way, is they don't start there. What they start with is script testing. And what script testing is, is the first thing is you realize that when you write a script, you experience a movie, you experience characters. And when someone reads your script, a movie plays in their head and they experience the story and they experience characters. And a lot of people make the assumption that the movie that plays in my head is really similar to the movie that plays in your head. Script testing is strategically asking a series of questions to find out what movie is playing in someone else's head. What story are they watching? What's happening? Why is it happening? Why is it interesting or not interesting? Who are the characters? What are the, how are they experiencing the characters? How would they describe the characters? Are they engaged with the characters? Or are they not engaged with the characters? And it's literally being able to track what they're experiencing story and character wise as they move through your script. And what script testing uh, aims for is not to know if someone likes your script, loves it, hates it, um, suggestions, critique, not at first. The first is, are they experiencing what I'm experiencing? And if they're not, why not? What are they experiencing different from me? So when I first started teaching at UCLA, I, did a, um, I had everyone bring in seven copies of their script. And so let's say you and I would switch scripts. I'd give you seven copies of my script. You'd give me seven copies of your script. You would take my seven copies and go to seven of your friends and say, hey, will you read a script by someone in my class? I haven't read it. And you don't have to have anything smart to say. You don't have to give feedback. You just have to answer questions about what you experienced when you read the script. And you really make it clear that you're not testing their reading comprehension. It's testing the writer's ability to have it come off the page. And so let's say seven of your friends say, OK, I'll do that. So they read my script. And then I would arm you with a series of questions that you would ask those writers. And you would record the, the conversation. And it's really important that you haven't read the script because you'll ask a question about the story or the character and one of your friends would start to give an answer and then say, is that right? And you would say, I don't know, I didn't read the script. And so at some point they'll just relax and they'll just tell you what they experienced. And you record that, all seven of your friends, and then you'd come back to class and give me the recordings and I would do the same for you. And then I would have each writer transcribe the recordings because you really have to hear it if you transcribe it. I have to admit, when I first started teaching at UCLA, there were things I did that were successful. There were things that, there was a lot of trial and error when I first started teaching. This was a real mixed bag because people were so demoralized. To, to, to have a script they poured heart and soul into, characters they love more than anything, and this is their character, but everyone else was seeing this. And this is like, no, this is despicable, and this was an amazing character. And a lot of people come up to me and they're like, you know, be careful of Julie in the class because I think there's something <laughs> wrong with Julie because Julie's friends are like all schizophrenic. I'm telling you because look at the feedback. Like her friends are. So there was that. There was one person who just dropped out of an MFA program. She did come back. Oh, and then right. I had another woman threaten to kill herself. Oh, no. She didn't. But that's when I stopped doing this exercise mandatory and I would make it, you know, voluntary. Yeah. Um, she did not kill herself. Oh, good. Um, a lot of people who came out of that class went on to be working writers and they said that this experience was the most painful experience they had as a writer, but the most valuable because they didn't realize that not everything that they were putting on the page was fully coming off the page to other people. And there are so many people that write scripts that get rejected in the marketplace or they don't get an agent to represent them or a manager, and they feel like, okay, my characters are story, something's not strong enough. That might be true, and it might not be true. It might be that if people actually fully experience your characters and your story, 
they would have fallen in love with it, but they didn't. Here's a true story. Now, this is not a rep this is not an average representation because this is a little clean and easy. It's not usually this clean and easy, but it'll it'll illustrate a point. So, an agent sent me a writer like, about not quite a year ago, close to a year ago, and is a really talented writer who's staffed on some really prestigious shows, but had never been able to sell original content. Always, her stuff was great, but it just wasn't great enough. So the, the manager had soft, had soft shown, had shown the script to some people in the industry that uh, he trusted to sort of unofficially get feedback on it. And people loved, there's two main characters. They loved this character, they loved the concept, they loved the engine, they loved where this goes, but the second main character found annoying, just honestly, like, if this character wasn't in the story, I would really be interested in this, but this character just ruined it for me. Um, and that was hard for the writer to hear because this character was the main character as far as she was concerned, and it was uh, sort of a reflection of, it was sort of an autobiographically, emotionally based character to her. So that always hurts because then they're not just rejecting your writing, it feels like they're rejecting you. So what I do when I work with a writer is instead of reading their script and then giving them my opinions, I always start with what, I wanna know the movie that plays in their head. I wanna know how they experience the story and the characters to see where it's not coming off the page the way they see it. And I knew, because she shared with me, that this character was the main issue. So I started with this character and I just asked her a series of questions, describe the character to me. And then whenever she said, I said, well, why is the character this way? And why, does, why is the character this way? And what does the character love more than anything in the world? And why is that? And what do they fear more than anything in the world? And why is that? And when this happened in the script, why did the character do it? And why do you find that so compelling? And when the character did this, why? Did it? And so it was, it was a good 30 to 40 minutes. And when we were done, I could, I could identify two pieces of essential context and let me just stop and define how I would define essential context. I would define essential context as everything the audience, reader or viewer, everything the audience needs to know or experience to understand what's happening, why it's happening, and why they should care. And that's true for the story and for the character. And I was able to identify two pieces of essential context that were not in the script. There was something about the character's motivation for the main thing they were trying to achieve that it wasn't clear to a reader. And there was also um, something about the character's backstory that I think was really important. The writer kept talking about this as part of why she cared so much about the character, and it wasn't clear in the script. And at first the writer was like, well, of course it's clear. And then I would ask them to highlight where it's clear. And then in doing that, the writer was able to realize, oh, it's, it's implied. But I could see how now someone may not get that. And then the, the other piece of essential context was gone. I mean, it, I'm sorry, in an original draft it was there, but as she rewrote it and rewrote it, it somehow got removed. This is a really common experience. It just wasn't there. And she didn't catch that because when she reads her script, the movie that, and the characters that play in her head, she knows all of this. She loves these characters. She knows exactly, this character is her, so of course she knows exactly why the character is doing it. Now, again, um, this punchline is, is really clean and simple. It's not usually this clean and simple, but with this particular writer, and again, three or four uh, very senior people in the industry at, at production companies had read the script and said, really like this, really love this, but this character ruins it for me. Okay, we just went in, well, she just went in and she changed one line of dialogue to make something crystal clear and then she added a scene. It was about a two page scene to get that essential context across in the script. So one change, one line of dialogue and added a new scene that was about two pages and the purpose of this page, these two pages was to make this critical missing essential context clear. Her in her backstory. Yes. Okay. Sorry. I'm um, yeah, actually the it was the, her motivation. It was the line dialogue for her backstory. But yeah. So both both what the the two things that she knew that we didn't know or experience were remedied with a change of dialogue and adding a two page scene. Sent it to her manager. Sent it to actually a few of the people she sent it to. Some of the people had already seen it, and, and he sent it to some new people. And everybody loved this character. 
and said, this is, this is one of my all-time favorite characters. And there was actually multiple, there were multiple bids for that script. Now, it's unfortunately not usually as such that after you do script testing, you realize, I change one line of dialogue, and I just add this one little scene, and the script goes from a pass to multiple bids. But that can be the case. Usually, there's more, there's more missing essential context, so it's a little messier than this. So it's usually multiple things that are going to have to be addressed. And that's the whole key to script testing, is to figure out where people are not experiencing what you're intending and why, and it almost always comes to essential context. And then it's figuring out how to rewrite the script. So here's a true story. Um, that the writers have publicly talked about, the writers of, um, of uh, Game of Thrones. So a lot of people probably know this, maybe some people don't. They originally shot that pilot and then decided to redo the whole thing because they didn't like some of the casting. And so they literally reshot the pilot, which gave the showrunners the opportunity to screen the original pilot for people. And they screened it for some friends and they realized there was a missing piece of essential context. So people who watched the original episode, the original pilot that never aired, when they got to the end, they knew that the Cer Cersei, the queen, was having an affair with Jaime, who was uh, like her main bodyguard. There, there's, a, there's a term for what he was, like the, the head of the queen's guard. So there's an official term. And that they were having inappropriate relations because the queen's married to the king. But people didn't know that that was her brother. And that whole season doesn't necessarily work in the same way without knowing that because that's the stakes of the show. The stakes of the show is that Cersei will go to any length to make sure that nobody knows her children are illegitimate in that way and illegitimate heirs to the throne. So they caught that and then of course when they went to redo the pilot they could rewrite and reshoot that. So I, this is what I was told, only an idiot, this, is, this isn't me talking, this was the manager talking to me, only an idiot would take a script out to the marketplace that they haven't properly tested to see if you have to rewrite, redesign, reshoot. And testing again is making sure that is, are strangers who don't know what you're going for, when they read your script, do they experience the story you experience? Do they experience the characters you experience? If so, then you certainly want to know well, what you think, do you have suggestions, do you have critiques, you know, where did, did it hold your interest? Like, you want to know all that stuff after you know that um, people are experiencing what you're experiencing. In the workshop that I teach, that I just came from uh, last night, we did an exercise where they uh, literally wrote a three to four page story. So like a scene, but not a scene in a script, like, like a short film, three to four pages as an as a exercise. And they have a main character who's trying to achieve something, and they have reasons, very motivated, why, you know, stakes to achieve it. And there's another character who opposes, and they have really strong reasons why they oppose. Three to four pages. And then everyone tested their three to four pages to see if everyone could fully see and experience all of the essential context. And with two exceptions, everyone, uh, discovered that there was at least one piece of essential context that wasn't being clear in a three to four page. The two people who nailed it are both working writers. I mean, one's an executive producer and one's a staff writer uh, on a really successful show. So they've been trained that way. So it, was, it is so important to test your scripts. And if anyone wants the questions, um, very easy, go to my website, uh, coreymandel.net, and just sign up for the newsletter and the autoresponder will give you the questions. So. Um, I highly recommend um, after you've poured heart and soul in your script and you, when you read it, you're like, okay, this is the movie or this is the TV show that I want to create. This is exactly what I'm going for. I love it. Now, go test it and see what other people are experiencing because when it does go out to the marketplace, I want it to be your characters. I want it to be your story. I want it to be the best possible version of what you're going for. So make sure by, by testing. With the student that you had where she wrote this sort of semi-autobiographical 
story and it seemed like the sidekick character or whatever was the likable one and the protagonist was the one that people were off-putted by or it was too off-putting. Once she changed a few things, one line of dialogue you said and, and a two-page scene. scene or yeah, something, yeah. Um, then people felt more empathy so, toward that main character? You know, it'd be like, um, so in real life, in, you meet someone and um, let's say that they just rub you the wrong way and you just, for whatever reason, you just don't want to spend time with them and you just don't care about them. But then you find out that they're really struggling because they just lost their father to cancer, a really terrible cancer, and they're just they're having troubles and they're in that mourning period. And let's just say that you lost your father to cancer. You immediately feel different about that person. Sure. You, right? And it just changes your entire dynamic. Now, imagine that you meet this person and you start to spend time with them and you never know that they just lost their father to cancer. You're gonna have a very different experience right. with them. So in this case, it, her character, when you really understood why she was struggling, why she was making some poor decisions, it changed how you felt about her, it changed how you understood it. And, the, and people went from thinking this is a very, very self-centered character who just treats people poorly so this is a character who's in a really bad space and they're doing their best and they actually are trying to protect their friend, but they're doing it in the wrong way. But it's, and it just changed how everyone felt about that Got character. It. Okay. I mean, it could be that subtle. 